Welcome to MEM 18072, Manufacture Fluid Conveying Conductor Assemblies. This is the Hose Assemblies Lecture. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook. Your student workbook or learning manual is invaluable to completing the online quiz and completing the practical assessments. Other publications like the Pertec Training Reference Guide and the Stamped Analysis Work Instruction are also invaluable documents to complete this unit. In this lecture, we'll be introducing the Pertec 10-step hose manufacturing procedure. All of these documents can be downloaded from PMoodle. Risk assessments and work instructions are all available on PConnect. We will be accessing all of the product catalogues published by Pertec from Pertec's website, www.pertec.com.au. Today's lecture will be divided into two main sections. Section one is the stamped analysis, determining the type of hose that we need. And step two, the 10 step hose manufacturing procedure, manufacturing the hose. Section one, the stamped analysis. Stamped is an acronym used in the industry for the identification of hoses and hose assemblies. Stamped. S is for size, T is for temperature, A is for application, M is for medium, P is for pressure, E is for ends, and D is for delivery. Let's take a closer look at these items. Even before we begin the stamped analysis, we need to ask ourselves some question. Firstly, why am I replacing the hose? Why did it fail? Other important information we need to know is the working pressure, the application. Is it static or dynamic? In other words, is the hose moving or will it be fixed? Types of hose tails. Is it in a harsh environment? Are the hoses rubbing against each other? Is dirt and rocks and rubble hitting against the hoses? And what industry am I working in? Are there any standards that I need to be working to? DIN, ASE, EN, for example. Do I need special approvals or special fire ratings or ratings for mining applications? These are all important in the hose and fitting selection process. Let's have a closer look at the stamped analysis. And a reminder that you can download the stamped work instruction from PConnect or PMoodle. I will be collecting a fair bit of information. I need to get organized. I'm going to create myself a stamped template because once I complete this template, I can use all the information that I've collected to manufacture my hose. The existing hose has information stamped along its edge. This is called the ley line. And in this case, I can derive a fair bit of information from this hose. Sometimes I don't have all the information I need and we have to work backwards. So in this case, let's populate our ley line field of our template and we can start collecting important information about our hose. Let's look at our stamped analysis. Our first section is size. I'm going to need to work out the overall length of the hose and the diameter of the inside and the outside of the hose. Pictured here is a length measurement from seat face to seat face. A quick check of PConnect, and we discover a work instruction for measuring and cutting hoses to the correct length. In this case, the inside diameter of the hose is stamped on the lay line, 3 eighths of an inch, which equates to 9.5 millimeters. Using a vernier, I measured the outside diameter the hose and I'll confirm this size later when I look up the hose identification chart. In this particular situation it's a Pertex R1AT hose so I go to the Pertec website and look up the hose from their catalogue. My inside diameter is 9.5 millimeters so it corresponds to an R1AT-06. 06 being the identifier for the inside diameter of the ball. I measured the diameter at 17.4 and the chart tells me it's 17.3. So the outside diameter is within the tolerance. Hose size 
is based on flow rate and pressure. We don't always have the information that we need to manufacture a hose. In our situation, we had all the information that we needed stamped on, on the hose. But sometimes we're going to have to use the cross-sectional area, uh, pressures and flow rates, and derive the correct hose size from that information. We can calculate hose diameters by using a nomograph. If I have the volume and the speed of the fluid, I can derive the hose bore diameter from that information. In this example, I have a flow rate of 100 litres per minute and a velocity of 4.5 metres per second. You draw a line straight across and where that line intersects the hose bore graph will be my hose size. In this example, it's a dash 16. Which here is dash 06, which is our hose size. The dash 06 means 6 sixteenths, which equals 3 eighths. Sometimes hoses are specified in cross-section area. By using some simple formulas, we can convert that area into diameter. I've gathered some information. Now I'm going to start populating my stamp template. ID of the hose is 3.8 or 9.5 millimeters. The outside diameter or OD is 17.5 millimeters. The length from seat face to seat face is 840 millimeters. So, for example, it's my measurement type B. Our goal is to ultimately work out what the hose cutoff length is. We'll look at T, which is temperature. The two critical temperatures will be the ambient temperature and the temperature of the media that we're conveying through the hose. According to the data sheet, my hose can go down to minus 40 degrees Celsius and up to 100 degrees Celsius for mineral oil. Common cause of the hoses cracking, being brittle, especially in the outer cover, is using a hose with the incorrect temperature rating. Let's add that information to my template. Stamped A for application. Where and how will I be using this hose? Will it be high pressure? Will there be impulses? Is it an abrasive environment? Will the hose be moving or will it be stationary? Will it be subject to extreme temperatures? Which hose do I use? In my particular application, the R1A or R2A hoses will be fine. I have a medium pressure, it's dynamic, no impulse, and yes, there's a small bend radius. Where on the circuit is this hose being used? Is it a pressure line, a suction line, or a return line? All these hoses are slightly different and have different characteristics. For my particular application, I'll be using an R1AT for the pressure line and the R4THT for the return and suction line. Refer to the specific technical specifications of the equipment that you're working on. Double checking on the uh, data sheet for my hose. Yes, application, medium pressure hose, fluids such as mineral oils, perfect. Pictured here is a hose with a radius of 45 millimeters, way too small. If we look at the uh, uh, hose data sheet, it's a minimum of 125 millimeter radius. So that bend would be too tight. I'd have to look at a different type of hose. In my particular application, my hose is basically straight. So this is not an issue. In this example, the Pertec Endurance has a smaller minimum bend radius than the conventional SAE hose. Terminology can be confused. Just remember, a radius is a size of an arc. Picture here is the 
bend radius or the minimum bend radius for this particular hose. Not to be confused with diameter, which is double the radius. Exceeding the bend radius could cause kinked hose and hose failures. Okay, I'll proceed to uh, enter the information for A application on my stamp template. Stamped M for media. We need to check and make sure that the media that we're transferring in our hose is compatible with the hose material. Information on the media can be obtained from the safety data sheet. We will be using Pertec Hydraulic Oil number 46. I get the hose liner type from the hose data sheet. I get the active ingredient from the safety data sheet for the hydraulic oil, and I'll cross-reference these bits of information on the chemical resistance table supplied by Pertec. I've identified the active ingredient. I follow the MBR liner material down to the active ingredient, and I get a G. G is good. Okay, I add the media details to my stamp template. Stamped P for pressure. According to the hose data sheet, my working pressure is 180 bar and my burst pressure is 720 bar. The working and burst pressure ratio is 4 to 1. This does not mean you can use this hose for a working pressure up to 720 bar. Select hoses that are based on working pressure. Sometimes information is given to you in the wrong units, for example, bar instead of megapascals. There are handy conversion tables or apps for your phone to do this effectively. One common cause of burst hose is incorrect pressure rating for the hose application. Stamped E for ends. I have two ends, I'll mark the first end with an X so I don't get confused. Then part numbers are made up by the configuration, the angle, the fitting size, the hose size and the series of connector. We have already established that our hose size is a dash 06. According to the hose data sheet, our hose tail series is either a K or a J. Again, we are a 38 hose ball. So again, it's under 58 because we're 38. So it's a K series. We're a straight angle. So our angle will be number one. Now we need to determine the fitting type and size. Now we return to our thread identification table. Looks like it's a JIC-09, which is 9 sixteenths UNF. The 09 stands for sixteenths. Quick check of the uh, Pertec configuration code. And it looks like it's a JF series. Okay, let's add our side one host tail adapter part number to our stamp template. Side two is basically the same except for the 90 degree bend. So our angle will be nine. Nine equals 90 degrees. I'll now add the side two part number to my stamp template and I'll do a quick cross-reference to the Pertec catalogue to make sure that I've got the correct hose ends. And yes, that's looking good. In this example, we have compounding errors. We have incorrect fittings, incorrect cut lengths, and acute bend radiuses, all contributing to the hose failure. Stamped D for delivery. Does the hose need to be placed in special packaging? Do I have to prepare the hose in any particular way? How long can I store the hose for? Do I need to label or tag the hose? Be aware there are standards for how long you can store hoses. Do the hoses require cleaning? 
We will have a closer look at this during the hose manufacturing process. Does the hose require pressure testing, military or government departments, for example? Is there special labeling or tagging required for the hoses? How are you going to keep the hoses in good condition and clear from any dirt? Capping and sealing of the hoses is a common method of protecting the hoses from contamination. Let's complete our stamp template. Yes, we're going to clean, cap and label the hose. Uh, pressure testing is not required by our particular customer. Be aware there is other information available on the ley line, for example, uh, particular standards that the hose is manufactured to. Does it have a fire rating or anti-static rating? Does it have a mine safety and health administration uh, approval? We've completed our stamped analysis. Now let's have a look at the Pertec 10-step hose manufacturing procedure. In other words, making the hose. You might want to download and review the Pertec 10-step hose manufacturing procedure learning manual. Step one, identify application or replicate the sample. Step one was basically completed when we undertook the stamped analysis of the hose. And here's our populated stamp template. We'll be adding a few extra fields because there's some other information that's uh, critical for the hose manufacturing. Step two, measuring the hose length. I measured the hose from seal face to seal face, pictured uh, diagram B, and it's 840 millimeters. Obviously, if I add the hose tails to the hose, my hose is going to be too long. The amounts I cut off the hose to get the hose to the correct finish length is the hose cutoff factor. I will be able to derive the hose tail cutoff factors from the hose tail dimensions on the hose tail data sheet. For side one, the cutoff factor to the seating face is 24 millimeters. Our A dimension for side two is 31 millimeters. All I need to do now is subtract the cutoff factor for side one and the cutoff factor for side two from my measured length and I'll have my assembly length. Now we have the cutoff factors for each end. Let's work out our final uh, length cut dimension. 24 millimeters plus 31 millimeters is 55 millimeters. So 840 measured minus the cutoff factor of 55 gives us a cutting off length of 785 millimeters. According to this tolerance reference chart, I have plus or minus six millimeters on my hose length. It's always recommended that hoses are a little bit longer than shorter. Keep in mind that hoses grow and shrink a little bit as they're pressurized and depressurized. Quick double check of my fitting to make sure I grab the correct one. Hose abrasion is one of the causes of incorrect hose length. Step three, cutting the hose. Make sure you reference the risk assessment and work instruction for your particular hose cutting machine. It is critical that you keep your hose squareness plus or minus five degrees. Only use the hose after the yellow tape. It's recommended that you save any cutoffs for practicing using the cutoff machine and for practice crimping. The hose cutting process should not fray, burn or deform the hose wire reinforcement or the rubber inner tube. Do some practice cuts using the off cuts to ensure that the blade's in good condition and that it's cutting squarely. You can cut the hose with a hacksaw, use a 32 TPI hacksaw blade, and be wary not to crush the hose while you're clamping it. Excessive cropping angle could cause the hose to creep or leak behind the fitting. 
Step four, insertion depth. Insertion depth can be marked with an insertion depth gauge. Insertion depth can also be referenced from the master crib chart. Incorrect insertion depth can also cause tail creep and leakage behind the fitting. Step five, skiving the hose. Skive or not to skive. In our example, the T at the end of the uh, hose part number stands for thin covered hose, which means no skiving is necessary. If you're not sure, always refer to the master crimp chart for skiving lengths and depths, and if skiving is necessary at all. In our example, R1AT-06, skiving is not necessary. Skiving is a process of removing the outer cover, or sometimes the inner liner, from a wine reinforced hose. You can derive the skiving diameter and insertion depth from the master crimp chart. There are numerous ways that you can skive a hose. We can use custom skiving tools. Hand tools like Stanley knives and hacksaws and skiving blades can be utilized to skive hoses. These hand skiving operations require a lot of skill, can be quite dangerous and can often damage the metal reinforcement on the hoses. There are various skiving tools available on the market to make this operation effective and accurate. Let's add any skiving information, if any, to our stamped template. Step six, cleaning the hose. For the length, and now we're just gonna put a, a pellet through just to, to clean the hose. That's the old pellet, as you can see all the, the dirt and residue that was left after we cut the hose. A popular and effective cleaning method is to shoot a sponge-like projectile through the hose using compressed air. The appropriate pellet and nozzle type will need to be selected for the particular hose type. Refer to the manufacturer's uh, reference chart for correct usage details. Step seven, assemble the components. A protractor, an angle setting tool, or a template may be required to set the angles of the hose ends. We update my stamp template indicating that I have zero angle offset on my hose. If I was setting an angle offset, I can add another alignment mark to my hose. So we'll have a hose insertion depth mark and an alignment mark. Onto twist in hose, can be caused by misaligned hose ends. Step eight, crimping the hose ends. Crimping the hose is the final operation in the manufacture of the hose assembly. Important information on crimping is available from the master crimp chart. The type of information includes the type of crimp, to skive or not to skive, we've established that already, the type of crimp collars and the crimp diameters. We now have to refer to the master crimp chart because we need to determine the side one crimp diameters, the side two crimp diameters, and if we were skiving, what the skiving diameter would be. In our case, uh, it's not applicable. Referring to the uh, master crimp chart, our R1AT-06, Feral Series K, insertion depth 25.5, crimp style, flat, we'll talk about that in a moment, crimp diameter 20.8, we have plus or minus 0.1 tolerance on that dimension, uh, skiving not required, and there's the rest of the uh, associated uh, information, working pressure, bend radius example. 
for our crimp diameter information to our stamp template. According to our master crimp chart, uh, we have a crimp style which is flat. The crimping dies, will either be marked a feral series size or crimp size. Make sure you're using the correct crimping dies. Familiarise yourself with the crimping machine, read the instruction manual and do some practice crimps before committing uh, expensive material and fittings. Depending on the hosen type, you might require a bubble crimp. Crimp sizes can be adjusted from the micrometer adjusting head on the crimping machine. It's recommended that you set the machine slightly oversize, measure, and then readjust and then recrimp. Realign the crimp ridges to the gaps in the crimp dies so as not to distort the uh, hose end when recrimping. Pictured here, I've gone undersize on the crimp, therefore this part is outside of tolerance so I can't use it. Even if the crimping was in tolerance, I would not be able to use this hose because the hex nut was crushed inside the crimper due to incorrect insertion. Let's do some practice crimps before committing your material or if you haven't used the machine for a while. After crimping the first end, check the overall length. There is some expected elongation of the hose end after crimping. You might have to recut the hose to ensure that the hose stays within the allowable tolerance. Or on the subject of uh, crushed uh, hose ends, uh, unplanned mechanical in interaction with other equipment can cause damage to hoses. Hoses rubbing against each other, rubbing against other pieces of equipment, being hit by falling rocks and debris. You need solutions like sleeved or protective uh, covers on the hoses might have to be investigated in these situations. Step nine, tagging the hose. On completion, hoses should be tagged and referenced. Information might be required for uh, replacement hoses or for warranty claims. For future reference, I've included the, uh, the label number on my stamped template. Step 10, capping the hose ends. Once the hose is completed, we need to cap the ends to prevent any foreign objects or contaminants entering the hose that could damage the hydraulic circuit. Crimp wrapping and hose caps are a common method. I will store and reference this stamp template for this particular hose for future reference or for remanufacture. This template's for reference only. Feel free to edit and add any other information you think is uh, critical for hose manufacturing. Here's another example of a template you can use to keep track of your hose details.